a riddle for you. When is a new Audi not an Audi? And what about when it's a Volkswagen or a Skoda? We are now in the age of electric car platform sharing, but does that mean that the age of badge snobbery is now over? Sounds like a riddle for Top Gear Tested. What is it? The Q4 e-tron is Audi's smallest EV, sits way below the e-tron GT saloon and the e-tron SUV in the range, but it's gonna do the big sales heavy lifting. By this time next year, this could be one of the best selling Audis in the whole world. But underneath, it runs exactly the same foundations, battery and motors as the Volkswagen ID4 and the Skoda Enyaq. And guess what? Those two cars start much cheaper though, so what exactly are you paying a minimum of 40,000 quid for? What does it look like? Well, Mr. Aubergine Emoji here looks like an Audi should, and maybe that's what you're paying for. Big blanked off grill, trick LED lights, sharp creases. Couldn't be any more quintessentially Audi if it was illegally parked in a disabled wheelchair space. This is the sportsback version of the Q4 e-tron, so it gets a sportier sloping roof, a boot that's slightly bigger, weirdly, than the standard Q4, and you pay about £1,500 extra for the coupe effect. How big's the battery? It depends which of the two battery sizes you opt for. Base spec is a 55 kilowatt hour job, only good for about 210 miles of range. If that's on the low side, you can have this 77 kilowatt hour spec that will do 310 miles claimed, or a bit less if you upgrade to quattro drive and dual motors. It's this 204 horsepower rear drive Q4, which they inexplicably call 40, that will be the really big selling one. Where's the charging port? No motorized charging flap nonsense for the little Q4, just a standard filler flap that won't confuse anyone who used to drive an Audi Q5. One reason you might want to upgrade from the base spec is the bigger battery car actually charges faster, so you can lob about 80 miles of range in during a 10 minute pit stop. Or it's about eight hours for a full charge on your home wall box, which is curiously similar to the Volkswagen and the Skoda that I might have mentioned earlier. Funny that. Is it practical? Now you might object to the idea of a coupe SUV because it does seem silly to buy a big, tall, spacious crossover and then chop the back of the roof off to limit your space. But in fairness to the Q4 e-tron Sportback, this is quite a well-packaged little SUV. There's enough room for a proper adult in the back seats. The boots are massive 535 litres, got a flat floor, and though the visibility isn't up to much, you can't really hate on the Q4 Sportback for being impractical, but you can totally still object to it for being a coupe SUV. I mean, when was the last time you saw a well-driven BMW X4? Will I get along with the tech? Well, it's fundamentally as easy as any other Audi, really, because most of this stuff is shared right across the range. So the crisp, swift touchscreen, I can get along with that. I can absolutely get along with having proper buttons for my climate control. There are just two problems, and they're both on the steering wheel. Firstly, it's totally the wrong shape. Flat top, flat bottom. Shouldn't have those. This is not a Formula One car. And then there's the buttons here and here. They're touch sensitive. And not only are they absolutely horrid to use, but they just feel cheap and nasty. Totally unlike the buttons in Audi interiors of old. What does it weigh? The Sportback is supposed to be 2,045 kilograms, just like an ID4. What a coincidence. Let's see how it's done on the scales. However, it's turned out to be heavier, 2,118 kilos. It's not exactly bringing Sporty back, is it? How fast is it? Oh look, a really long open test track and I just happen to have my hyper accurate GPS timing gearbox with me. That'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? Now, if you've watched the Top Gear tested verdict on the Volkswagen ID4, then the numbers for the Q4 are gonna seem strangely familiar. 
well, more than that, they're exactly the same. 204 horsepower at the back, 0 to 60 claimed is 8.5 seconds, and the top speed limited to 99 miles per hour. So, not expecting it to be hugely fast, but I am interested to see if paying extra for an Audi gets you home any faster. I'm going to have the drive select in dynamic mode, pull this little toggle back for drive, foot on the brake, and then just jump on the throttle. Off we go. Yep, this is very much the kind of two litre turbo diesel of EVs. It's got some torque, but this is not a fast car. This is a rapid enough car. 80 miles an hour while I've been talking to you. Closing in on 90. Now, will it do 100? Will we get our 0 to 100 mile an hour time? It's thinking about it. Indicated 100, 101. Okay, you've had long enough, I'm gonna call that time to break, if you don't mind. The Audi Q4 e-tron managed to hit 60 miles per hour in 7.92 seconds. So just like the ID4, this has gone over half a second quicker from 0 to 60 than claims. It never reached 100 miles per hour, maxing out at 99.9, .9, but it won't do three figures. So the ID4, fractionally faster in a straight line. And covered the quarter mile in 16.3 seconds at 86.1 miles per hour. If you are paying more for the Audi, you certainly aren't paying for any extra secret performance. What's it like on a motorway? Well, one of the reasons that you might want the Q4 Sportback, besides having an allergy to a useful shaped boot, is that this slopey roofed version is ever so slightly slipperier through the air than the standard Q4 SUV. It's got a drag coefficient, if that sort of thing matters to you, of 0.26 CD and the standard car is 0.28. So there you go, fractionally slipperier through the air, but frankly, any old flavor of Q4 is a really good motorway car. Though this is a relatively small SUV, it feels like a big, expensive, hushed, accomplished motorway cruiser. And it's not gonna be an autobahn stormer because it won't get past 99 miles per hour. I mean, this is a premium product, so perhaps we should nitpick. I think there's a little bit too much wind noise coming from these mirrors once you start going really quickly. Only a tiny bit, but I can see why they like to replace them with cameras. Is it comfy? Well, it wasn't that long ago, was it, that an Audi, especially one with S-Line written anywhere on it, rode like well, you were sitting on top of a washing machine that was fully loaded with bricks. Things have improved since then, I think it's fair to say. I mean, on the road, the Q4 does pitch your head from side to side a little bit, but I'd say it rode with a touch more sophistication than a Tesla, at least. What I am surprised about is that this Q4 launch edition doesn't have adaptive dampers. It doesn't let me put the suspension into a comfort mode. It's almost as though Audi thinks its customers are happier having 20 inch spangly wheels as standard than a clever and comfortable ride. What's it like in a corner? Well, it's a right old pain because the steering wheel itself is covered in straight bits and corners. Ugh. You know what, actually, it's probably fine. If you weren't bored to tears by an Audi Q2 or a Q3 or a Q5, then you'll probably quite like the Q4. What about if you're late for something? Hmm, have we arrived at last at the point where the Q4 starts to differentiate itself from all the cousins that share the same bits under the skin? This is a tidy handling car. It's not awe-inspiring, it's not life-changing. I'd stop short of saying it's fun, but until not that long ago, pretty much any Audi was an understeer specialist if you got your foot down. But it does the job that's being asked of it well enough, and it doesn't feel like an absolute pudding. But this has actually got plenty of grip. So what about range? Well, Audi officially rates this model of the Q4 e-tron, which is rear drive, big battery, it's gonna be the biggest seller as being good for 300 miles, maybe 310 miles of range. But real world, that's gonna be more like 250, 260, and a bit less in winter. 
unless of course you do graduate from the official Audi driving school of slipstreamer tailgating, in which case you can do a lap of the entire world on one charge. Getting three miles per kilowatt hour of efficiency is pretty easy in this rear drive spec, but when Top Gear tested the twin motor Q4, it struggled to do better than 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour, which is almost as rubbish as the horribly heavy full fat e-tron SUV. Less is more. I'll tell you what's annoying though, and that's the regen braking. See, like a lot of EVs, I've got paddles behind the steering wheel and they adjust how much regen power I'm getting, how much power I'm putting back into the battery, and as a result, how quickly I slow down when I lift off the throttle. And that's really intuitive, it's really handy in town. There's three levels of regen in the e-tron. But if I'm dialed up into say level three, and then I breathe on the throttle, it's gone, it's gone. All of the regen is gone, and it's now back into maximum coast. For me, that just feels so inconsistent. If there's one thing that I want to remain the same, all the time in my car, it's how quickly it slows down when I lift off the throttle and how hard I need to push the brake to get it to come to a complete stop. And in the e-tron, it's just too much of a guessing game. What's the verdict? I have to admit, it is tricky to take a car seriously when it swaggers in looking like a cross between an angry minion and Barney the Dinosaur, but the fact is the Q4 e-tron is going to tick an awful lot of Audi-shaped boxes for people who like Audi-shaped cars. It's very well put together, surprisingly crisp to drive, the tech is spot on. It's played quite safe, but name me a mainstream Audi that isn't. The thing I can't really get my head around is where the extra money you're paying is going. I mean, this is a good car, a serviceable car, a recommendable car, but is it that much more refined than a Volkswagen ID4? Is it that much plusher inside than a Skoda Enyaq? And they're just as quiet. They're just as rapid and they go just as far on a charge. We've arrived at a bit of a moment, haven't we, for the premium badged car. I mean, they're everywhere now, they've taken over. You're certainly not paying out for rarity anymore. But in the electric revolution, when everyone's cars are getting much quieter, much more refined, much swifter, it feels like the likes of Audi and BMW, Mercedes, they're going to have to work a lot, lot harder to justify you putting your money into one of these versus a kind of mainstream badge rival that has all of the same numbers and all of the same abilities. As a result, the Q4 e-tron is another strong, recommendable electric family SUV, but an Audi that somehow seems to lack a bit of a USP. 